Welcome back to the Pursuit of Accuracy. I'm Josh, and in today's video, we are gonna take a semi-auto 1022 base rifle and pit it against a high-level bolt-action 22 long rifle, and we're gonna see if the semi-auto can hang with it during today's testing. So the first thing we're gonna do is put both these rifle on paper at 50 yards with the same lot of ammunition, just to make sure that they're zeroed and that they will hold somewhat of a group. After that, we're gonna shoot them on a 50-yard KYL. Then we're gonna move out to 100 yards. We're gonna shoot them on a 50-yard KYL at 100 yards. Then we're gonna bring everything back in and we're gonna put both of them on the chronograph to see how they perform against each other with the same exact lot of ammunition in standard deviation and extreme spread, as that's probably one of the most talked about things about semi-auto rifles is that they just can't compete with bolt actions when it comes to consistency at long range. And the standard deviation and the ES is going to tell us whether or not that's true. So at the end of this video, we'll recap everything and I'll talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of a semi-automatic 1022 versus a standard bolt action competition rifle. And if this is a viable option for the competitive shooting that you're gonna try and do. All right, so not fantastic with this lot, but certainly good enough to hit some steals. All right, so now we've got the Voodoo up here. Obviously, you guys are all real familiar with this. The four and a half to 30 track torque on here. Let's see how the 1022 does on steel, even though it wasn't shooting nearly as accurate as a Voodoo. All right, we're going straight into it, 50 yards. Oh, missed just off left. All right, so we had a windage miss on the quarter inch. Uh, you know, that happens. I think we got a round left. Maybe one more. Oh. So you can see there, uh, I missed a one because of windage, but after that, I went right back through. One, two, three, down there, hit the quarter inch, no problem. So. Let's give the Voodoo a shot now. See if I can get that middle one on the swing. Oh, I just nicked him. Get the quarter inch on the swing. See, not a problem at all, but in this wind, it's going to get a lot trickier real fast out there at 100 yards. For this next part at 100, we're going to get one shot at the Shooting Target 7 KYL. That actually is the new Gen 2. Uh, if you're looking for really good quality steel targets, I've got more I need to put on the channel, some fun targets that he's come out with, but time has been against me. But that is the brand new Shooting Target 7 KYL. It's a 50 yard KYL, so it goes down to a quarter inch, but it's at 100 yards. So what we're gonna do is guesstimate, we're gonna dial up about 1.8. Well, let's see what we can do. Elevation looked pretty good. Oh, I nicked it. Need to hold no wind. Oh. Uh, not bad. 
drop 200 yards in this wind, I'm happy with that for this rifle. That is well above and beyond the expectation of any competition rifle um, by a long shot. So let's give the Voodoo a shot. Let's send it. Oh, barely nicked it. We were off way left there. Oh, nicked it. Oh, and barely nicked that guy. We did clean the KY out. Didn't look really good doing it, but it did clean it. So now let's pull those cameras back in and what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot both across the chronograph. So we have 10 shots recorded. We have a low of 1072, a high of 1092, average of 1084, with a standard deviation of 6.2. That's really not bad. And a stream spread of 20. So that tells me this is really not going to be that bad a distance. So out of the Voodoo, we had a low of 1088, high of 1107, average of 1100 feet per second, standard deviation of 5.8, extreme spread of 19. We're talking one feet per second different out of the same lot of ammunition between these two. Obviously, the 1022 didn't like it as much at 50, you saw it in the groupings, but you know it performed exceptionally well for what it was. So the results were a little bit surprising from this using one lot of ammunition. The semi-auto 1022 was extremely close to the bolt action and I really didn't expect that because honestly I'm one of the guys that for years has been saying that the semi-auto won't really compete with a bolt action at distance but I mean short of just magical things happening outside of ballistics and science I, I just don't see it anymore and obviously this rifle has been really good it didn't perform that well at 50 on paper but it didn't have any problem running the steel and the results were scary close out at the 100 yard KYL and those targets were far smaller than any target you're ever going to see in competition with either one of these rifles an NRL 22 or PRS but I don't want to say all this and just say yeah you should just you know trade these in and go pick up 1022s because that's not reality. The reality is is that you're probably going to have more feeding and mag issues with a 1022. They are a dirtier rifle, so you're definitely going to have to keep them cleaner and they just tend to have more overall issues. Obviously the 700 action stuff has, you know, really 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 good triggers. I have a kid trigger in this single stage, but it's like two, two and a half pounds. It doesn't really compete with a Timney hit at eight ounces in this rifle. So, you know, if you're really looking for every extra little ounce of gains and performance, then I think the bolt's probably still gonna top it. But raw performance wise, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this, especially NRL 22. Um, and especially if you're running things that are 90 second part times, you do have to engage the safety instead of just leaving the bolt back like you would on a bolt gun, but those are learnable things. So I really don't think the rifle at its core is a disadvantage. And who knows, maybe four or five years from now, they're gonna have a different magazine design. I really, really wish that they would make a 1022 style rifle that took one of these mags. I think the rotary mag is the worst part of this whole thing. I think it's what 
basically causes all the issues outside of it just being an insanely dirty rifle and kind of hard to clean. But if they could go to a different mag setup, I think they would be a lot more viable. But I'm really surprised by the results. If you were, leave me a comment down below. If you enjoy this kind of content, you know, the match ammunition and stuff, it comes at a premium. I would certainly appreciate it if you liked this video and if you shared it with your buddies. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We're gonna continue to make these videos. I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.